Okay, so let's put our, our previous rules into practice. I've got a puzzle for you here, so go ahead and uh, write down what the derivative is. So the function is 3 plus 7x plus negative 0.009x squared plus 10 to the 7th times x cubed minus x to the 4th over 24. All right, hopefully you paused the video, you wrote out your answer, and you came back to compare it to what I'm going to say. I have another puzzle that I'm hiding with my hand here. Okay, well, the derivative of a sum or difference is just the derivative of each individual term. So I can say, well, what's the derivative of 3? Derivative of 3, 3 is a constant, so its derivative is 0. How much is, is 3 changing as x changes? 3 changes 0 as x changes. What's the derivative of 7x? Well, um, 7x is 7, which is a constant, times x. So uh, the 7 gets copied, and the derivative of x is 1, because that's x to the 1. The derivative of x to the 1 is 1x to the 0. Uh, or you could just say, how fast is x changing when x changes? Uh, well, it changes with a rate of 1 as x changes. Here we have another multiplying constant, so I can just copy that. And what's the derivative of x squared? With the constant power rule, it's 2x. And then this one's tricky. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, right? What's the derivative of 10 to the 7? Is it 7 10 to the 6th? Well, 10 to the 7 is a constant. It doesn't change when x changes. So I can just copy the constant. I could have written out 10 million. 10 to the 7th is 10 million. And you might have been less tempted to try to take the derivative of it because it's obviously a constant. But when you've got an exponent here, maybe it doesn't feel like a constant, but it still is. So then the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And then the last one is maybe trickiest of all. We said you can't take the derivative of a quotient and just take the derivative of the top, the derivative of the bottom. So is that going to throw me for a loop here? Well, I can think of it that x to the 4th over 24 is equal to 1 24th x to the fourth. I can write the dividing as a multiplying by a fraction. So when I write it that way, then I see, oh, this is just a constant multiplier on x to the fourth. Uh, I still have a minus here. So I'm going to copy the constant multiplier, 1 over 24, and then derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed, and I'm done. Now, there's a debate as to whether you should simplify this. I would say don't simplify it because this way I can see exactly where each term came from. Uh, you might say, well, I want to simplify this by multiplying the 0 0.009 by 2 and get a, getting negative 0 .018, uh, 0 0.0018. I would say this, if it was a real problem, this 0 0.009 probably came from a measurement or a trend line or something, and I want to just be able to follow that all the way through the problem. So I would say, don't simplify this, just leave it with all the, uh, all the like I could cancel the 4 and the 24 and get a 1 6th. Um, I could bring 3 over here if I wanted to. Um, but I'd say don't simplify unless I say it's worth your time to simplify. Simplifying, um, you might mess up, uh, it takes your time, and you lose track of where the various numbers came from and went to. So I think that's three strikes against simplifying. Um, I think this is simple enough. If you type this into a computer, it will do the multiplying for you uh, behind the scenes, and then we're all happy. So I'd say don't simplify unless I say it's worthwhile. All right, our next puzzle is what is Three, derivative of 3 sine t plus 4 cosine t. So pause the video, write out your answer. Uh, did you notice here um, I tried to keep everything in nice neat columns where everything was directly below the term it came from? So I'm going to suggest the same thing here. All right, hopefully you paused and wrote out your answer. Let's see if it matches this one. So the 3 I just copy, it's a constant multiplier. Derivative of sine is cosine. And then derivative of 4 cosine t, well, 4 is a constant multiplier, 
And what's the derivative of cosine? This one might take a little remembering. Is it negative sine t? Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine t, but there's a problem with what I wrote here. Take a sec to think about it. Maybe pause the video. Have you spotted the problem? The way I wrote this, the order of operations would say do a subtraction here. But I really meant to say multiply 4 by negative sine t. So I can fix that by putting a multiplier dot right there. So I can put a dot right there and then that will be the right answer. Or you could do the same thing with parentheses. You could say 3 cosine t plus 4 parenthesis negative sine t. And I see people making that mistakes, that mistake on quizzes and uh, exams and stuff. So please be very careful about that because it's quite common that we have a multiplier times cosine and we take the derivative and we really need to make sure we keep doing a multiplication, not a subtraction there. All right, one last thing to mention. What are the various ways in notation we can say what's the derivative of sine of t? Um, so we can say what's the derivative of sine of t. Um, so you could put sine t in parentheses and take the and do prime on it. That's good. You could say d dt sine t. That's good. Um, how about f prime of sine? That seems to be asking f prime is what we write when we say the when we mean the derivative. But it's what we mean, uh, say, when we mean the derivative of f. And here we, it looks like we're passing sine to the derivative function. So that's too confusing. We don't want to do that. Um, or uh, some people might say f prime of sine t. That's also confusing. Um, another way to ask what's the derivative of sine t, if we really want to do something like this, what we have to do is define f of t to say sine t, and then say f prime of t equals question mark. That's asking what is the derivative of sine t. Okay.